So the following two problems are going to be based on the information we have here. Let P of X be the amount of profit a company earns for producing X units of an item. It costs the company $10.95 to produce each item and they re retail for $29.99. They also have an overhead cost of $5,995. In the context of this problem, explain the meaning of P of zero in practical terms. Well that zero is an X value. So we're identifying our input, x is the number of units. So what this is going to give us is the amount of profit if they produce no items. So this is profit if zero items are sold, produced and sold. So We've identified the zero as the number of items, so let's take a look at our answers. The number of items produced when they have a profit of zero dollars. That's not it because we, the zero is not a dollar, it's amount, it's um, number of units. When they sell no items, which is good, when they're selling no items, they make a profit of $5,995. Well, if they sell no items, they're probably not going to make a profit. In fact, they had an overhead cost of 5995 they should actually lose money if they sell no items. So it's not going to be B. How many items they need to produce to break even? Well, we've already said they're producing no items, so that actually doesn't make any sense. Also, the break even would be with the profit zero. So that would actually be P of X equals zero for this one. When they sell no items, they make a profit of negative $5,995. Well, because they had an overhead cost, $5,995. If they sell no items, they're automatically going to lose that money. So, the two big things that we had in here, the sell no items, well, we identify that in two, and they're going to lose their overhead cost if they don't produce and sell any items. In the context of this problem, explain the meaning of P inverse of zero in practical terms. Well, if P of X gives the amount of profit, then P inverse is going to do the exact opposite of that. P inverse of zero is going to equal X. Its output, its input is going to be profit, and its output is going to be number of units. So this is zero dollars profit. And this is X items or units. Now, let's see what matches the best. The number of items produced when they have a profit of zero dollars. There we go, first one. Zero dollar profit. This would give us, if we calculated P inverse of zero, its output would be the number of items with a profit of zero dollars. So it's going to be A. Uh, the reciprocal of profit when they produce zero items, just to see what that would look like. That would be P of zero inverse, or to the negative one, I should say, not inverse. Um, that's raising P of zero to the negative one, which would be one over P of zero, because then we're actually treating negative one like an exponent. When it's written here with the function name, it's actually inverse notation. So it's a subtle difference, but make sure you're able to identify that difference. The product of zero and P inverse, well remember this is not, these parentheses are not multiplication, this is our function notation. The number of items they have not sold, well there's nothing in this problem telling us that, it's relating zero dollars profit to the number of items at zero dollars profit.